Okay, in this video we're going to talk about the ice flow node. And this is a node that uh, doesn't seem to have much in the way of documentation at this moment in time, but I've managed to piece together a little bit how it works. And one of the areas where it's most confusing, of course, is you know what is the input that it requires in order for it to function? Because the node itself is not necessarily horribly difficult. You can play with some, a bunch of the settings and you can figure it out. But in terms of you know the input, what does it require? That's the part that usually uh, tricks people up. So what I've got here is a very simple mountain, and then I'm taking that and I'm masking off based on four percent here, and then I'm also doing a constant at four percent. And if we then combine them, we'll set to min, what I end up with is essentially just the water information. So they're both set to the same value, bring that in, and I just get where I want the water to exist. And this is what um, usually messes things up for people is, what do I put in the water? And this is what it wants, it wants zero. And then anywhere that there's going to be ice, you go ahead and put that. Now, in my particular case, I don't want ice filling the entire square, but you can, that's, that's what it does by default. But I would rather have it kind of fall off a certain distance from there. And for that, I went ahead and used another height map. And so I made sure that there's like a fall off to from the edge of where the water is uh, down through to uh, the outer areas here. So with this, I've ensured that the ice doesn't branch out too, too far. If I remove this, which is that, you'll see it goes right to the edges. So this is just a snowfall. And let's just break down some of the rest of the stuff here, just so that we see what's going on. Um, my mountain is going to height information. And then that's going into color just to fake water. You wouldn't do this if you had actual water. The water shader would be responsible for this. Just the same as I'm also doing something similar here where I'm taking that fall off where it's coming from this. And let's just go ahead and plug that back in. And we take it to here. And we can see that I'm using the fall off that's coming through in the ice mask and using that to color it to mimic depth there as well which combined together gives us that. And of course, then we take our snow mask and the original water mask, and we get all the colors together. From the ice flow, I added the ice flow stuff to it, threw an erosion on there, and then I combine it back with that 4%. So we have the flat region here, actual water. And that's what I'm previewing with G. Just, you can see the little purple dot there. So when I click on that, it uses this height. So let's come back to this node and we'll poke and prod it a little bit and see what it does. So I'm just gonna disconnect the mask and we'll take a quick look at it. And in order to really have a good look at it, we're just going to take off the smaller chunks temporarily. And we can start playing with this. So I'm going to take uh, gap way down and take churn way down. Let's grab the uh, cracks, bring those way down. And um, our coverage is our initial overall coverage. Our secondary coverage come from the smaller coverage here. So you see it fills in a border around the outside. If I increase that, there we go. And see that it starts to fill in around there. But for the original stuff, go ahead and bring the cracks up more cracks and more cracks. And it's basically a scale factor for all the little crack features. And at 1K, they're pretty small. So you don't really see a lot at this really small gap width, but we could take that gap width up, be a little bit more aggressive with it. 
and then that makes more areas for stuff like the smaller stuff to fill in. So just keep in mind that the smaller chunks um, and their coverage is all about being kind of in the gaps of the main ice generation. For something like churn, you notice that there's sort of like a wiggle to this, while churn increases the intensity of that wiggle and that break up. So if you want something a little bit more chaotic, you can do that. You don't have to worry too much as well because the smaller chunks tend to fill in a lot of those gaps, so you don't really see much of that. And so the smaller chunks um, details here tend to fill in the gaps that are left behind there. And as a result, you don't really see the patterns quite so much, like the, uh, the weird computer-generated stuff. Uh, that said, however, there's also, I mean, the Voronoi itself is, is relatively um, recognizable. So uh, this is really something that is meant to be used at a much higher resolution. So uh, breakage, pretty straightforward there bigger chunks or smaller chunks in there. And then your coverage, you go down far enough. Really stop seeing any change at all. So it has to be big enough to fit into those gaps. And initially it does fill in quite a lot. Like if I get rid of this, you're gonna see like a lot of open space. So even with this at a coverage of zero, Right, set everything to zero. It's not the same. They're more or less intended to be used together. So increasing the coverage and then watching your coverage here. Right, and that gives you a more natural breakup. So you got the big chunks working out to the smaller chunks. And then you can adjust your breakage To your desire. Another aspect here is height. That's the thickness of the final result because it's basically just sort of like a 2D result giving height map information. And if we look at this scale here, I'm not entirely certain what it's doing. Um, it seems to be doing some shift to some of the pixels at the edge. but it doesn't seem to show up at the 1K or the 2K resolution that I'm using beyond the fact that the edges seem to get softer or harder. So I believe there might be a secondary texture that might be visible at 4K or 8K, um, depending. Uh, I've yet to uh, kind of nail that one down. And of course we have our seed, but um, I assume you guys already know what the seed does. So I'm just gonna pause this video. I'm gonna take it up to 2K to give you a quick preview. You can see it's a bit crisper there. You can see the edges a little bit more clearly. And if we go ahead and plug that in, you're gonna see it's breaking it down so that now it's just at the edges. This probably shouldn't take too long to calculate. Well, the erosion might be not as fast. Two K. There. There it is. So it could use some refinement, obviously, and uh, in my case, eroding it has given some breakup. You can do other things to this to break it up even further. Um, stuff that I sometimes like to do is uh, using things like chatter or some of these other ones can break that stuff up. So we can see it like this or use something like chatter and you know tune it to your, your taste. You can see it it does break it up a bit further. So really we're just taking output, which if we just grabbed a nice little constant, we might be able to visualize. Just go 
going to set this to mask. Set it to 100%. We'll visualize this. So you can see chatter might be a bit too overall aggressive. And it's eaten away at that edge a lot more than maybe I might want. But we can also dial it back and see what the result is of that. Um, and there's other ways that you can break it up, of course. So anything that you can do with you know, all this stuff here, you can uh, you can perform on this. And um, because it's just black and white information, rather than just using the ice flow node, you can always go ahead and take that information, and then you can use it for masking color. You can also use it for adding height information to the surface, which is what the ice flow is node is doing. So really all you need it for is just the generation of this and then you just process that information however you want um, so that you can have maybe a bit more breakup or depth or whatever but it gives you that initial shape. So I hope this gives you most of the information you're looking for. This way you can uh, find some interesting creative ways to make use of this node and I will see you in the next video.